Greetings, greetings, greetings. This is Lisa Bubari, and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. For those of you who do not know me, uh, by practice, in practice, I am a clinical hypnotherapist and stress management consultant, and we have a center in Glendale, California called Heal, Heal Within, it is a healing center for mind-body therapy. It's so good to be here with you. Thank you for joining in. Early this morning, actually late last night, I did a quote of the day. And in there I asked, what would you like me to talk about as far as healing or health? So today I wanted to bring it to you and ask what it is that you wanted to discuss, and I'd be more than happy to discuss. Hello, Becky. Thank you for joining in. Hello, Thelma. And someone emailed me asking me to talk about communication and how I can be of help for children. Children have a very special place in my heart. Of course, I do not have any children of my own, but I've helped many of my clients through hypnobirthing and have a child and been a part of their life. And even one of them I'm going to be seeing tonight. So, you know, a part of the work that I do is not so much you come in, we resolve some of the issues, and then you leave but it is creating this tribe, creating this community, creating this people that we know, and we come together. And throughout the years, I've had clients who have come, resolved some issues, and have gone, and yet we are still in contact. We are in contact not only through my newsletters that I send out, and by the way, if you would like to join my newsletters, please sign up on my website, which is healwithin.com. And, but a relationship as far as it becomes an acquaintance, it becomes this inner community that we have a relationship that is developed. And it's not necessarily a friendship every single day. Some of us are, like you are here. But it is a connection. And you know, we have a connection not only with people that we have coached, we have helped, or if you are in the real estate business, you have helped them in finding a house, their ideal home. If you are in finance, you are a part of them, helping them create this financial uh, success. If you are into graphics, in health, in whatever it is that we do in life, we are constantly connected with people and we create this beautiful energy and synergy with the people who come into our life. And of course, yes, there are the ones who come and go and some we are very happy that they have left, right? So when we think about connection especially as adults with our younger ones how can i help adults communicate or help their children well i work with children from the ages of six years old and up why because children have fears children have stress i know adults feel a lot of stress doing a lot of work, um, working all day, coming home. Believe it or not, I give kudos to so many of the women who not only have a career, um, family, work, come home, and they've got the chores at home, and the children, schoolwork, and being a chauffeur, taking them from one place to another, and that constant worrying not only of their safety, 
of time management and also taking care of themselves and taking care of the husband. You know, there's so much. And without understanding this, we pack on all this weight. Truly, it's a weight. It's an emotional weight. It's a burden. It's a baggage. And somewhere, somehow, someone has to carry it. And you do. Women carry it. Please. I'm not saying men do not, but in a different way. So women carry all that. And where do they put it? They have to put it somewhere, right? It's in the body. And men do it the same thing. But we release it and let go of those burdens and weights and stressors in a different way. Most women hold on to it. And they hold on to it as far as putting it on their body. And men release it differently. But women hold on to it and put it on their body. And children hold on to it as well. So I want you to know that it's not only adults who carry that weight and stress and anxiety, but children, they look and listen and learn from you. So as they are moving about every single day, they go to school, they are overwhelmed with not only their school and play and um, schoolwork, but one of the things that they also do is they come home and they look at mommy and daddy, if both are at home, or their caregivers, whoever you are. By taking care of yourself without realizing that you are mentoring, you are being the best image that the child sees. So there are stressors. Why do I have family members especially mothers, they are the decision makers for our health and wellness, most of them. Do they bring their children to us? Fears, anxiety, stress, and because they don't know how to release it, especially nowadays, children are not running around and playing. They are doing a lot of this which is not releasing all that tension out of their body. So children need to run around. They need to have a lot of activities that body movement helps all that tension to come out. So if there are children who have fears, anxieties, self-esteem issues. They become introverts and pull their hair, pull their eyebrows, hurt themselves, bang, have tantrums, or they are called ADD and over anxious. Believe it or not, just one or two sessions of hypnosis can help them take control and become calmer and release all that tension and anxiety and stress in a different way because they become in control and they can monetize and shift their attitude, shift their behavior, shift their anger far more faster and easier than adults can. So this morning, I'm walking Bodhi, and most of you, if you know me, know that I have a dog. So early this morning, I'm walking my dog at about 7, 7.30. And near my house, there is a elementary school. Every time I walk, some of the parents that I see, it's a repeat, you know, they take their children to school. So I stopped as uh, I see one of the parents with 
his dog. He's coming back after dropping the kids over. And we said hello because the dogs are greeting each other. And we started talking and he asked me what I do. And I told him that I practice as a clinical hypnotherapist. And he said, you know what? It works. I said, of course it does. So what did he want to share was so significant as to what I'm talking about today. He said, I do hypnosis on my kids and I have helped them become, uh, go to a hypnosis by hypnotizing them at night and that's how they started eating vegetables. I'm like, how did you do that? He says, well, I learned this technique because my wife went to see a hypnotherapist many years ago for some issues that she had. So she learned how to do the self-hypnosis and taught me And every night when I sat next to my kids at night. I did this guided visualization for them to drop into that state so that they can go to sleep much easier. And right before they slept, I used to tell them how wonderful it would be for them to eat vegetables because vegetables, even they get to like the texture of broccoli. And broccolis are just like small little plants and they love trees. And every time we go somewhere to a park and there is this trees, and that broccolis are like beautiful green trees. But those are the ones that we get to eat and the texture feels so good, especially other vegetables like carrots and peas. And he says, by golly, it worked. Next thing I know, they're eating the broccolis and they're saying, daddy, the texture feels so good. And he says, I never realized it can be so effective. Now, here's me letting you know that if you want to make a difference in the life of your children, you are the most powerful and loving person, guide, and you have a rapport with your children. So instead of dissing your children for something that they do wrong, how about you encourage them and empower them to do something better? So if they have done something, let it go. And you can turn whatever it is. They dropped it. They broke something. And you just say, wow, that broke. How about next time we are more aware so not to break it? Because that means so much to mommy or to daddy or the thing that broke it's okay but next time we are more careful not to break things because that shattering even the sound or if it's a glass it can help you it can hurt you not help you it can hurt you and that glass can cut and it will hurt you so for them to know that if they break something, it's not the end of the world, that you are not screaming and that sound of scream becomes this thing that makes them go crazy as far as it's the worst thing that ever happened because then they are doing this and every nerve and every muscle, every organ, every tissue in their body goes into a spasm. Now, if you want to shock your kids, that's a different, which I hope you don't. But at the same time, it's always not only children, but as adults, that when we encourage lovingly for them to do something that you want them to do, like, Broccoli feels so good. The texture is so good. And you like it. That effect of what is better, what is good as children and as adults, it's so much better for us than the negative aspect that we are being punished and negative. You see, a mentor of mine, 
and someone I have learned so much, Joe Polish. Joe Polish has a saying that hurting someone or negativity or punishment is not going to help someone stop at the addictive personality. So punishment does not take you away from pain, but encouragement and love does. That's how I work with my clients, either a child or an adult. It's always something that we want. In life, we move towards our most desired image, our goals, everything that we set in life, we move forward in life for the things that are loving, encouraging, happy, joyful. We don't move forward in life to feel the essence or the feeling of punishment or fear. If anyone has told you that fear is a great motivator, I want you to think of this. If you are in a movie theater and they let you know, in case of any emergency or fire, there is the exit doors. Please move towards the exit doors and you go there. That's why we all do this, you know, companies and organizations, they do the uh, once a year drill for everyone to know how to do it. But when there is a panic, just like the panic that the doors open and people are swarming in there for a Black Friday. And here you are sitting and looking at it and you're going, they're crazy. Well, creating that panic is not bringing you closer to your goal. But if they gave you an incentive, incentives make us move forward and do things more lovingly than ever before. So with children, I like to use this guided visualization. If they like the ocean, have them just sit at the beach as if playing with the sand, right? As they are going to sleep, you do this beautiful imagery and storytelling as if one day either if they know the ocean, if they have been to the ocean, or they can just dream about this beautiful place and playing with sand. And if they've never experienced sand, create a sandbox. And even just feeling the touch of playing with sand in itself. And if there is water, the touch of the moist sand, that they can create sand castles. Or find a bucket and put the sand in there and pour the water. And then they can just truly imagine doing that. And just the feeling of the touch and being in the environment, and the sound of the water, the ocean, that in itself is incredible healing. And while they're imagining that, you give the suggestions of how easily they can also relax as they play with the sand. Or playing with Legos. Just pour, just put a lot of Legos in front of them. And as they become busy putting Legos and finding how to create a castle or just a box, or anything that they like. It's not about us, it's about them. As they are putting the Legos, have them say what they feel. What does that make you feel? Are you happy? Did you build it? Awesome, you just built something. Now let's create something else. So encourage them, no matter what it is that they create, either with crayons, or Legos, or sand, as long as they're imagining doing something. You see, adults, we like doing nothing, going into that state of meditation, but children like to imagine doing something. And while their imagination 
either combing the hair of a Barbie doll, if there is any children still playing with dolls, may, may that be the awesome thing, or playing games. It's not so much this, the games that they're playing here, but the games in their imagination. We've all been children and stories and imagination are still the most powerful thing that there is. That's why books are still written in the storyline. So today, I encourage you to become one in a way that moves forward in life, creating this most amazing, magical stories for your children. So that you empower them and help them shift their tantrums, their anger, their resentment, their pain, or stressors easily and gently into more loving things so that they are in charge. That when they are taking a shower or a bath, that the controls, the cold and hot, it's as if having those controls inside them, that when they are upset or angry, they can take that cold knob and turn it and turn it and turn it and automatically it cools them off. And you can truly ask them to place that cool, collective, calm knob within themselves. And every time they close their eyes, they can just turn their emotion, resentment, anger into cool and colder and calmer. Actually, so can you. You too can place that sea, cool, calm, collective insight within your mind, within your body, within yourself. And every night, every day, no matter where you are in traffic or when you feel upset, just close your eyes, tap, and just imagine that sea that you can just visualize the coolness, calmness, collective, in control knob. And the more you turn it, the more you up it, the more you become more calmer with it. And the same thing is with children. As a matter of fact, kids thrive on having this little gadget or a gimmick or this whatever it is we call it placebo kids call it a knob give them a knob give them something that they are in total control that they too can feel in control of their internal mind and of their body i hope this message was beneficial to you and if you like it share it with someone else who has a child if you do know of a family a child who has lost his or her mom due to tragic accidents i am here to stand by you beside you and help that child it is my honor and my privilege to be of help to families that assist and help other children, especially the ones in need, so that can, they can feel empowered, they can feel joy, that they too, I can help them boost their self-esteem so they know they can thrive and they do matter. There are more than enough. And by the way, so are you. With us, it is always a good time to heal within because healing within starts with tapping inside. It's about evoking what was from the past 
so we can acknowledge it and recognize it. And then we embrace it, embrace what is, embrace the reality, embrace who we are and what we are. It's not necessarily our weaknesses, but it's building on our successes and it's building on our strengths. That's when evolving comes in. It's about the transformation. It's about the movement forward in life. So every single day, stand in front of the mirror, wink, say thank you. The biggest gift you can give to yourself, saying thank you to the one in the mirror. Because the only person that matters is the one who sees you as you see the person in the mirror. You are significant and you do matter. My name is Lisa Bubari and this is Time to Heal Talk with Lisa. Time to Heal Within. You may always find me at healwithin.com. You can go to my website in the shop I have many CDs and books. And today, November 28, is called the Giving Tuesday, Tuesday of Giving. And I would like to gift you all my sessions that I do for the next week. I will be doing and offering all my hypnotherapy for one hour at the price of $99. And that is is gifting and saying, I am here for you. So call me, email me, and let us book your sessions. Thank you for being present. Thank you for being you. Until next week.